This is a this is actually a multi regional effort okay. to try and prevent um, aquatic invasive species okay. from coming into the into the state. Meet Captain Eric Anderson. This three part series is an informal interview Republic had with him at the Aquatic Invasive Species Checkpoint in Washington on the Idaho border with Spokane. Part one is about the AIS program and ecology problems presented by these water invaders. Captain Eric Anderson. I'm Jana. Hi, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And and I run the program. Mm-hmm. I oversee it. And I actually am one of the persons that, that helped draft our RCW. Okay. And we took the Fourth Amendment well into concern. We went worked through our Attorney General's office on this. The persons that helped draft the RCW? <laughs> That's laughable. What Eric and his cohorts, representing the utility and agriculture industry in Washington State, did was use a model law packet put together by the National Sea Grant Law Center. This law center was financially supported by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the U.S. Department of Interior, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and the U.S. Department of Commerce. For grant and award numbers for this funding, look in the description where I have all my sources listed. The Sea Grant Law Center provided at least one report in 2014 and one in 2016, guiding Western states in how to set up their laws and regulations establishing these checkpoints. So what Eric did was use these models to fill in the blanks and details that pertain to his state. I'm not saying he didn't do any work in drafting Washington's RCW. I'm saying the framework was done. He and his cohorts on the Aquatic Invasive Species Council in Washington just had to fill in the blanks with local information. I mean, it even has a suggested name for the bill to be introduced. No, really. They suggest Keeping the Waters Healthy Act. Eric's contact with the AG was to ensure that the AG office would back this law under the Lacey Act, which we will get into later. Just keep in mind, the United States is a corporation. And as much as order followers like Eric want to think it's about ecology, the bottom line is protection of corporate interests. This is true no matter what party sits in the throne of government. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of our constitution and mm-hmm. our, the rights of citizens. You, mm-hmm. you got no bigger proponent of it than me. Okay. Um, but one of the things is, is with the Fourth Amendment, is it is not an absolute guarantee against all searches and seizures. And, and if you read it, actually, it even says unreasonable searches Correct. and seizures. Right. And so one of the things that the court has weighed is what is the overall benefit to the general public mm-hmm. for certain things? Mm-hmm. And when you look at motor vehicles, mm-hmm. they are further, I'm not going to say exempted, but they are further, have, have less um, protections but you them, you but still must have reasonable suspicion even as a police officer nope, nope. you must have a reason to pull them over okay. I don't agree that I'll find a bigger proponent of rights of citizens than Eric but I'll leave that one alone to his point about the fourth amendment guaranteeing your right against unreasonable searches according to the state of Idaho so far in 2018 the percentage of boats stopped that have been found to have AIS or aquatic invasive species is nine one hundredths of one percent or 0.09 of a percent. Does that seem like a reasonable percentage of infected boats to justify making all traffic with boats pull over for inspection? Remember, the crime you are reasonably being suspected of committing while you have a boat is the transport of AIS. Okay, well, and, and number one, on, on this, our number one <clears throat> thing that we are trying to stop mm-hmm. from coming into this state is zebra and quagga mussels. Mm-hmm. And that is public enemy number one, to a vista the, and to no, people. No, 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 no. This is, this is, and that's, and again, this is one of the things I, I've actually watched some of the YouTube videos mm-hmm. that you guys have posted. Mm-hmm. I don't even know who a vista is. 
Uh, and could you could you Avista is a power company okay. and it uses water to generate its power and these zebra mussels are clogging up their waterways and their tubing systems. Well, it's actually no, they're, no, they're not. Is, See, is can, can I ask though what what zebra mussel what is it affecting what ecology is the zebra mussel damaging? What where where we don't have them. That's why okay. we're trying to stop. Eric is so far like every Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife official I have met. He doesn't want to listen to concerns, he only wants to redirect and stick to his state-justified talking points. I'm the ruler here, and you will listen to what I tell you. Remember, he thinks he's a huge proponent of citizens' rights. He claims not to know who Avista is, even if he doesn't know the utility company who uses the hydroelectric dams the taxpayers paid for in eastern Washington. What I'm conveying here is Jana is making a point that he himself will touch on later. This is being used as a scare tactic to get us all to fall in line, something our government does often. However, at this point, he is so in argument and shut this questioning citizen up mode, he doesn't even pick up on the fact that she said this. To what the zebra mussels have done in the other waterways yes, in America. Yes, I have. It's over five billion dollars a year. Then you contain it there. Why are we trying to? I, but that's right. what we're trying to. Okay, these things, these things can live out of water on boats for up to 30 days. Okay. Okay. So again, a boat can be across America in less than I understand. A quarantine would be to take vessels from problem areas or waters and keep them from leaving or transporting the mussels for 30 days. When I looked up the definition of quarantine, nowhere did I find anything relating to what is happening here. So they may be trying to quarantine AIS, but like usual, it's government and it is always a day late and a dollar short. We're starting to hear about cleanup and where the mussels are currently located. Originally, the problem was only in the Great Lakes. It then spread to many other eastern states. It has migrated west even with the prevention effort. We'll get more into this later, but it appears their quarantine and prevention is failing miserably. I'm bringing it up because it will come up again in the next part of this series, so just keep it in mind. I will quantify because Corey's talked about, hey, you don't have to answer questions. Based on the law, if a person pulls in and mm -hmm. says, I don't want to talk to you, mm -hmm. we don't talk to them. We don't talk to them. Okay. And that's okay. It's, it's based on the inspection. Mm -hmm. And so then, but when we do ask them, we do ask them, okay, where was this boat last? Because again, we want to assess the threat that that boat could potentially do. This is one thing Eric and I agree on. The RCW 77.135.120 that establishes these checkpoints only says you are required to stop at them and allow for an inspection of your boat. You don't have to answer any questions. I would recommend you don't. They have iPads and are tracking what you say. I know what they say they are tracking us for. I also understand the deeper meanings for our government having this information, which has little to do with preventing the spread of AIS. This is the, the Columbia River Basin <clears throat> is the last largest river basin in America that doesn't have these. And we have the most to lose. I'm not, and like I said, I don't know who Avista is. What I'm trying to protect is I am trying to protect, there's, there's four major things that these things will do if they get into the Columbia River system. Okay. Okay. Number one, I'm with Fish and Wildlife. Mm -hmm. Take a look and do a little research on what they have done to the ecosystem of the Great Lakes. They are completely destroying that ecosystem. They take it over. They reproduce. If they get into the water and start reproducing, they reproduce. They have the ability to spawn and produce a million larvae in one spawning season. If the temperatures are right, they can do multiple spawning seasons every year. And they can exponentially take over the waterways. Then what they start doing is they filter the water. And they are such an efficient water filter that they, they've calculated out that every liter of the Great Lakes water is filtered through zebra and quagga mussels in a 24 hour period. And that starts affecting the total food web. They have been having problems. The Great Lakes used to be very productive fishery lakes. Oh, I, I get and, it. And that's starting to go down. They then, these things are also bagged on um, biomagnifiers. So if there's any toxins, I mean, there's a lot of toxins in the water. They filter it and they concentrate it in their tissues. And then if there are any other animals that eat these things, it caused major, they had a huge um, water bird die off in the Great Lakes mm -hmm. to, to, to zebra and quagga mussels. So that's the environmental, and, and we have endangered salmon runs in the Columbia River and Snake River system. That this, that could be the final nail in, the, in, the, in their coffin if these mussels get in here. When Eric is purely talking about ecology, I agree with him. 
beyond the ecology aspect, my views on AIS prevention differ big time. Several years ago, a lake located right near this checkpoint was infested with Eurasian milfoil. It's an AIS that is a weed and takes over lakes, choking out native plants that native fish thrive on. I remember reading about the cleanup of the lake and how much it cost and the threat posed by the plant. Funny thing though, it didn't seem to affect corporations like the zebra mussels do. Remember I mentioned the ag and utilities in Washington state? They didn't seem to be very bothered by this and other AIS weeds. However, these mussels that can mess up their equipment mean the government must step in now. No checkpoints when weeds affect just the health of fish and the sport of fishing and boating. Introduce AIS that affects industry and the corporate states of America and BAM! Checkpoints inconveniencing the public everywhere. We control people so corporations can profit. Thanks for checking out Questionable Authority for part one of this aquatic invasive species checkpoint series. Check out part two for more of the story. For now, like and share this video with everyone you know. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications of new content. Check us out on Twitter and Facebook as well. Enjoy part two of this series by clicking on the thumbnail on your screen now.